Our next speaker is Annie Nguyen, who, as Chris said, was vying for the last student in my lab. <laughs> and they both made it more or less on time. It was, it was very, very convenient. Got everything signed off, in and under the wire, and off into the real world. So that, that's a part of it. So Andy's your, going to be your speaker right now. Um, not the Sandy, but that Andy. And he, he decided, of course, Andy was here that research is okay, but maybe not the best possible thing I can be doing by time. And he started investigating alternatives. And, and the Department of Pesticide Regulation has a big grant program and a management program that, that they run and, and can work with. He slipped right into that job perfectly well all the time. So he, he came by now, I think, as an undergraduate from Kim End or something. Kim Inge, it always makes me nervous because I had a whole bunch of chemical engineering roommates to college. And, uh, <laughs> but I think it's probably okay. So, Andy, go on. Thank you, Andy. Uh, so, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is also Andy, uh, just like our beloved guest of honor today. And, um, let me tell you, um, it was it was quite an experience working for a boss who shared my name. Um, obviously, I had bad mates who would refer to Andy Walker a lot, um, and they would of course just refer to him as Andy. Uh, like for example, I have a meeting with Andy today, or Andy's not in his office right now, or Andy's in Italy right now, or something along those lines. And uh, it could it could get kind of confusing sometimes. And it took, it took some getting used to. Um, I eventually had to uh, desensitize myself to my own name at one point uh, to not always have my ears perk up when I heard my name mentioned. Um, I know, I always found uh, the emails between Andy and myself to be really amusing because it would always start off as, hey Andy, uh, something something blah blah blah, signed Andy. And then in response, hi Andy, sounds good. Signed, Andy. It just, it just felt like I was talking to myself sometimes, you know? Um, and then about a year or so into my PhD, um, our lab hosted an Argentinian PhD student. Um, some of you know her quite well, Ines Ugalde. Um, so Ines had this uh, great idea to sort of distinguish between Dr. Walker and myself in conversation. Um, she was like, why not just call me Andy Viet Nguyen, why not call me uh, Andito, or Little Andy in Spanish? And we just keep Andy Walker as just plain Andy. Um, I personally didn't mind that, so it stuck. And so for much of my PhD years, I was Andito. Um, and even though I'm not referred to as Andito anymore on a daily basis, nor would I maybe want to for professional reasons, um, but uh, that's that term of endearment um, will always bring me back to the great memories I have in the Walker Lab and the fond memories I've shared with many of the people in this room today. So speaking of memories, um, before I talk about my current work in California state government, um, I do want to reminisce a little about my history with, with Andy, uh, big Andy, or just kidding, he isn't that big, I'm just, I'm just small. Um, <laughs> So I started uh, working with Andy as an undergrad uh, in 2012, and um, I left the Walker Lab right when it started shutting down um, around this time last year in June 2021. And um, that's when I graduated uh, with my PhD. So during the math, I spent about nine years in the Walker Lab, almost uh, a decade of my life um, with Andy and the great people in the Walker Lab. And I honestly owe Andy uh, so much. Um, and the funny thing is, uh, I felt like it was almost by sheer luck or, or chance that I met him and got started on this path. It's, it's a long story, but uh, I'll try to keep it short. Um, so as Andy did mention, um, I did my undergrad in chemical engineering and biochemical engineering here at UC Davis. Um, but as an undergrad, I didn't really quite feel that it was the right fit for me. Now, chemical engineering is a fascinating and very practical field. I know that our department chair, David Block, is a trained chemical engineer himself. Um, but for me though, uh, the topics just weren't 
clicking well with me. Uh, so here I was in 2012 as a third year chemical engineering major at Davis, uh, lost and not knowing what to do with my life. Um, and so I randomly, I randomly took uh, an intro to winemaking course um, as a GE. Um, now Andy was not the one who taught it, but uh, for the first time in my undergraduate career, I found an academic topic that actually caught my interest. And I just decided to just jump on the opportunity and just see where it would lead me. And uh, that led me, to, that led me to, to discover that our campus has an incredible department of viticulture and enology, um, doing world-class research with amazing people and facilities, and I wanted in. I wanted to get some hands-on experience because for the first time in a while, I finally found something that I wanted to do. So I emailed a bunch of professors in the department, telling them that, hey, I'm an undergrad outside the department, um, but I really wanna get some hands-on experience with this stuff. Some professors responded, and said, sorry, we don't really have anything for you right now. And um, in other cases, my email might have gone lost in the, in the mess of emails that everyone receives, and I never got a response. Um, but I did get one response that literally changed my life forever. From Dr. Andy Walker on October 2nd, 2012, I quote, Come on by my office to chat, and we can discuss research opportunities. And well, I jumped on that immediately. So we met up, we talked, and my first impression of Andy was that he was so approachable, so caring, and there was one line he said to me that first day we met, and this line stayed with me for my entire career in, in academics. Um, Andy said that he thinks any student at a UC who wants research experience should have the opportunity to do it. And that stayed with me throughout my PhD and one reason why I brought on so many undergraduate students um, onto my own graduate research. Um, but uh, anyways, back to when Andy and I first met. Uh, well, one thing led to another after that first meeting, and Andy connected me to the wonderful Dr. Cecilia Aguero, who was working in the Walker Lab at the time, and who will also be speaking um, later, and I look forward to that. Um, and I started working as her assistant, and through her, through Dr. Walker, and through other Walker Lab members, I started learning all about viticulture and grape physiology and grape breeding and taking care of greenhouse plants and, and just everything. Um, so in 2015, uh, three years after working as an undergraduate assistant, I, I, I did start my PhD in the Walker Lab because there was just no way that I could leave. Uh, no way that I could leave my mentors and this, uh, this community that gave me the foundation to start a PhD in a field that I never even knew about before I started at Davis. Now, there's so, there's so many more stories I could tell about my time with Andy and the Walker Lab, but the theme of today is uh, the past, present, and future. And well, uh, I suppose we'll move on from the past and uh, go into the present now. Um, so I currently work for the California Department of, uh, of Pesticide Regulation um, in the Pest Management Grants Program. So one of our main missions in the Department of Pesticide Regulation, or DPR for short, is to protect human health and the environment by fostering safer and more sustainable pest management practices. Although, as our name does imply, one focus is on regulating and monitoring the use of pesticides, um, but sustainable pest management is really the key goal here. And of course, the work that Andy and the Walker Lab did does have a lot overlap um, here. Um, so great breeding for pest and disease resistance is most definitely an approach towards sustainable pest management. Um, so as I mentioned, I work in the Pest Management Grants Program at DPR. So directly stemming from our department's goals, our grants program funds projects that advance um, integrated pest management, or IPM, and support more sustainable 
pest management. Um, we fund two different types of grants, uh, research grants and alliance grants. Research grants are fairly self-explanatory, especially for those of you in academia. Um, but one key thing I do want to mention is that our DPR research grants primarily fund projects that develop or enhance um, IPM knowledge, tools, and techniques. Um, for example, um, planting pest-resistant plant varieties is definitely an IPM technique, but those pest-resistant varieties have to come from somewhere, right? Someone has to breed them and do all the work to get there. Um, so a grape breeding project focusing on integrating pest resistance would definitely fit well into our research grants. Um, as for our alliance grants, uh, they fund projects that promote or implement proven IPM practices with stuff like outreach and, uh, and education. So if I were to follow up on that grape breeding example again, um, a possible alliance project would be something that promotes a new pest resistant variety and educates growers about this new variety and get it to plant it in their field. Um, in other words, um, putting research into practice. Um, there is a short three minute video on YouTube that promotes our grants program. I won't play it right now because it just repeats a lot of the same stuff I just mentioned. But uh, if anyone wants a link to that, uh, just uh, let me know. So as a part of my role at DPR in the grants program, I am part of the process to determine which projects we should fund. Um, but, after, but after the projects are chosen to be funded, I also serve as a grant manager for a small number of those funded projects. Um, as a grant manager, my main job there is to make sure that the money is being spent properly, making sure that deadlines are being met, and just making sure that the project is going as smoothly as possible. Um, one project I've been assigned to as a grant manager is a research grant project being led by Dr. Rodrigo Krugner at the USDA. Um, so this project is looking at ways to control the spotted lanternfly. Uh, this pest isn't a huge threat yet in California, but may pose a risk in the future for grapes and other crops. Um, so this project is looking at using vibrational signals to disrupt mating in this spotted lanternfly. And so if successful, we would be able to control this pest without the use of any chemicals. Um, so really fits well into the goals of our grants program and DPR in general. So this project was just funded as of our most recent grant cycle, so hopefully there'll be some promising results in a year or two. So moving on to uh, the future now, and maybe one of the most important takeaways from this uh, talk is that DPR has over four and a half million dollars in available funding this upcoming year to fund projects that advance IPM and support more sustainable pest management. Um, so if we were to split that money between the research and the alliance grants, we have a little over three million dollars for research projects and one and a half million dollars for alliance projects. Um, we encourage anyone with relevant project ideas to submit a proposal. Um, as I mentioned several times before, plant breeding for pest and disease resistance is definitely a part of IPM um, since it all leads into more sustainable pest management. Um, we anticipate our solicitation to open this summer, likely in July. So uh, if you're interested, please keep an eye out for that. Um, also, please feel free to check out our website. You could also just Google DPR, um, Google DPR grants, and our pest management grants website will pop right up. Um, from our website, you can also check out um, previously funded projects to get an idea of what we funded in the past. Um, also, feel free to just email me with any questions you may have um, with the process. So I just want to end off by saying that the future of viticulture requires IPM methods and grape breeding for pest and disease resistance is just one of those many methods. And we at DPR would be happy to help support that work. Thank you so much. And again, I'd be happy to answer any questions over email or feel free to just check out our website. Thank you.